like I mentioned in my previous video on trauma bonding, a trauma bond is like a drug addiction where victims of abuse become psychologically addicted to their abuser and they find it really hard to leave a relationship. Well, if you feel like you have ever tried to leave a toxic and damaging relationship multiple times, but you keep ending back with your ex despite the abuse, it might be an indication of trauma bonding. This manipulative technique can cause long-term negative effects and a lot of suffering. These seven stages of trauma bonding will give you insight to know if you've developed a trauma bond with your partner. Welcome back to my channel. Sherry Pranam is my name. For personalized assistance, I'll leave my details at the end of this video. Now, understanding the seven stages of trauma bonding sheds light on how and why trauma bonding happens. Let's get right to it. Stage one, love bombing. In a trauma bond, there is abuse, devaluation, and then positive reinforcement. Yeah, but of course, it does not start that way. In the beginning, the abuser usually employs a manipulation tactic called love bombing. At the inception of the relationship, they overwhelm you with gifts, excessive praise, constant communication. They may even call you their soulmate early on in the relationship, planting the belief in your head that your connection is fated. Yeah, your connection feels deep. It feels intense and you experience erotic moments. You feel appreciated, loved, and they present themselves as your ideal partner. Yeah, I'll talk more about the love bombing manipulative technique in another video. Uh, let's go to stage two, trust and dependency. They could start doing anything and everything to get your trust. They make you depend on them heavily for love and validation. It might sound like this. Um, my love for you is so strong that no one could ever love you like I do. Yeah? They start to get in your head, making you think they're the only one for you, the only one that could love you. The relationship goes from zero to a hundred. You become inseparable and you think no one will ever understand your love and connection. Yeah? They get you hooked and gain your trust. They might rush you into commitment and suggest that you move in together or get married even. These are usually false premises as when they feel that they have gained your trust, they will back out from the commitment. You start feeling attached to them and your emotions begin to feel dependent on them. And when they sense that you are becoming addicted to them, they slowly start distancing themselves. Craving their love and validation is an indication that you are developing trauma bonding signs. Yeah. In a healthy, loving relationship, love and acceptance are always present, as your partner will never leave you craving for their affection and validation. Stage three, a shift to criticism and evaluation. Now, you might not notice how they gradually shift to the criticism stage. It generally starts slowly, and you might mistake it as a normal progression of two people getting more comfortable together in a relationship. The criticism might be about how you're dressing or acting or who your friends are. They are subtly blaming you for small things, then bigger things. They are demanding and to want more of you for themselves. They are drip feeding you with negative thoughts about yourself and your life. Suddenly, they start belittling you and you find yourself being blamed for everything that goes wrong, including their feelings and perceptions. As they enter into the devaluation stage, they become more demanding and it seems like they are never pleased no matter what you do. Like it is never good enough. You start to think they are, you know, things, you start to think that things are wrong with you. You find comfort in this person as they are, you know, always telling you, they're always here to protect you. They're telling you these things to protect you. Now, this is a part of the narcissistic cycle, an abusive pattern that leads to the trauma bonding. Stage four, gaslighting. During this stage, your abusive partner denies your feelings and experiences. When things go wrong, they tell you it's your fault. They make you doubt your own perception and manipulate you into believing their narrative. They twist facts and make you feel that your concerns are invalid. Narcissist gaslighting causes a lot of confusion and it can lead to questioning your own sanity. They do that to you. 
Most often, victims of gaslighting develop a cognitive dissonance as their abusive partners deny the abusive behaviors and accuse them that all the problems in the relationship are solely their fault. This is an emotional manipulation technique and can make you seriously doubt your own thoughts, memories, and experiences. Stage 5. Resignation and submission to control. In this stage, you, are, you no longer know what to believe. Reality feels a little bit fuzzy. Yeah? It can feel like you've taken a back seat in your own mind. Your only way of feeling good or okay is giving in and doing things their way. I mean, it's right at this point, it's easier to just say yes. They have taken control and are in the driver's seat to making all of the decisions. You realize that no matter how hard you try to reason things out, you cannot get anywhere. Having an open and logical discussion in a relationship with a narcissist is impossible. Every time you try to reason things out, your partner continues to blame and criticize you while shifting the point of the argument to something irrelevant. You find yourself mentally and emotionally exhausted. So you decide to try and do things their way in order to just, you know, resolve the conflict. This empowers them to continue disrespecting your boundaries while hoping that you get back. While you are there hoping that you get back to stage one, you know, to just get their love and affection. Stage six, loss of sense of self. Any attempt to take control into your hands and set boundaries in your relationship results in extreme emotional manipulation and abusive behavior. When you try and fight back, things get worse. You start to settle for anything to have some, you know, peace and make the fight stop. Anything that can just give you some peace, you start to settle. You find yourself constantly apologizing to them out of fear. You know, you feel like you've done something to upset them. Even when you haven't, this person has broken down every part of confidence you once had before. Your self-esteem, out of the window. You completely neglect yourself but you have the need to attend to their needs. You wonder how it has got to this stage and where it went all wrong. You find yourself feeling powerless, exhausted. You know, this is a common symptom of trauma bonding. Losing touch with your true self, your principles, your personality. At this stage, you will do just about anything to avoid another conflict or more suffering. Stage 7 emotional addiction being in a relationship with a narcissist feels like an emotional roller coaster you become addicted to the highs and the lows as your body is on a constant stress high and it craves dopamine this creates a cycle of dependency that feels a lot like substance addiction you are in the exact position they want you in trapped yeah? You feel anxious and stressed all the damn time. At this stage, you struggle to find pleasure in anything and you crave relief from the pain as a result of being rejected by your partner. This creates a cycle of dependency that can feel very similar to drug addiction, like I mentioned earlier, and then narcissists go through the toxic behavior cycles which leave their victims at their mercy. This kind of behavior also leads to trauma bonding, which keeps their victims trapped in a relationship, craving for the next love bombing stage. Like you're always there waiting for it. Now listen, breaking free of a trauma bond is not easy. Even though you can sense that the relationship is toxic for you, you struggle to leave your partner. You find yourself making excuses and just find their behavior. However, deciding to stay in a toxic relationship is a symptom of trauma bonding and you need to pay close attention. This kind of emotional and mental torture will never stop if you do not choose and decide to let the narcissist go. You need to break free from the trauma bond. You need to cut all contact with the narcissist and physically distance yourself. Healing from a narcissistic relationship is not easy, but once you take the necessary steps to get over the trauma bond, it becomes a little bit easier. Professional support can be extremely helpful in your healing journey. It can help you gain an objective perspective on what is happening in your relationship and rebuild your self-esteem by working on yourself with someone who can understand and validate your experience. You can also get closure and reconnect with yourself to reclaim yourself back to the person you are destined to be. If you 
feel these stages apply to your relationship, please reach out to me on Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.